Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Roper. I'm gonna show you how to complete the Easter egg genetics activity. So there is a, there's a slideshow in the Google Classroom and it has pictures of different Easter eggs. See, there's a picture of this one. And then there's also on the next slide, the solution. Okay, so I want you to work through each of these on your own, uh, but you can always check your answers because I have a picture of the solution on the slide following the picture for each Easter egg. So this activity is kind of fun. So you see a plastic Easter egg and notice that um, they're halved. Okay, so half of it's blue, half of it's green. Think about one side of this Easter egg being a potential egg and the other side of the Easter egg being a potential sperm. So when they fertilize, when they fertilize, what are the possibilities of the offspring? What would they look like depending on the color of each parent? Okay, and th there's beads inside. Think about the beads inside being their offspring. So right here, this is something that you need to refer to for each of the problems. So there's two different charts, all right? On one side of the chart, it tells you the phenotype. So remember, that's a physical appearance. I can look at this Easter egg, and this side is blue. That's a phenotype. I look at the Easter egg, I see it's blue. That's its physical appearance, all right? So the phenotype possibilities are purple, orange, and pink. Now, this is our practice one together. We're doing this example together, this practice one. And of course, neither half is purple, orange, or pink, so I go to this data chart. So now we see the three different phenotypes uh, of blue, green, and yellow. Okay, so for each phenotype, the physical appearance, the color of the egg, the genotype is given. So blue is big B, big B, gonna use that genotype. Green is big little, the heterozygous, and yellow is little b, little b, both lowercase. So we know that's recessive, that's recessive. Also notice that each different genotype has a different phenotype. We've been practicing this week that as long as there's a big B there, you'd think it would be blue, okay, for this one too. But no, this heterozygous has its own genotype, okay, so be, be aware of that. Also for this one, you would think as long as there's a big P there, it would be purple, because that's the dominant, but each of these genotypes, remember a genotype are two letters, each of these genotypes code for a different phenotype. So you really gotta look at your Punnett square and those four squares inside with the four possibilities and just make sure you check them back with each chart. So this is our example. Half of the egg is blue and half is green. So I already wrote in there, already typed in there for you that half is blue and half is green. So because the half is blue, right here, genotype, big B, big B, I typed in there that blue is both uppercase, homozygous dominant, and that half that's green, big little, it's heterozygous. So uppercase, lowercase b. We're gonna first cross these in the Punnett square. But of course, your first step with each of the practice problems on the next couple pages is you just simply type in the colors, um, the possibilities, you'll have to look at the pictures, uh, but they could be all orange or all pink or half purple, half pink. All right, so you really have to look at those colors and match them up with the genotypes. Let's do this example though. So we're crossing big B and big B and big little B, that heterozygous genotype, because our example, half is blue and half is green. All right, so I like to write the first uh, genotype on top of the Punnett square and the second one on the side. Just like that. This one goes there, this one goes there. One letter per box. So remember, for this first box, the big B comes down, this big B comes over. So that's homozygous dominant. This big B comes down, this big B comes over. And that's another homozygous dominant. And then this big B comes down, this little B comes over. Remember, if there's a big and a little, you always write the big first. So it's big, little. Same for this one. Okay, same for that one, big, little. 
Now we look at our results. Okay, we look at the results. We have two homozygous dominants. So up here, homozygous dominant, that means blue. Okay, so my results, when I open this egg, I expect to find two blue, and we have two heteros here, two heterozygous, big B, little b. And up here, big B, little b, that means green. I expect two blue and two green. So you would type that in to this document. And then you look inside the egg. I have the egg here. Oh, you don't have the actual eggs, but there's a picture of the results in that slideshow. So make sure you check. So when I open this, indeed, there are two blue and two green. So I can match these up to the Punnett square results. So if that egg fertilized that sperm, these are the four possibilities. Punnett squares, they don't tell us this is the way it will be. This is just a prediction, a prediction. So if this egg and the sperm, okay, if these two Easter eggs have 10 Easter egg babies, about five will be blue and about five will be green, about half and half. Maybe six turn out to be blue and four turn out to be green. But still, that's about half and half. And that's why we use Punnett squares. It predicts the results of a cross. When we cross these two colors, we expect to get these offspring in that ratio, that ratio, half and half, 50%, 50%. So if you are correct, um, you can put a smiley face or say, yes, you are correct. If you weren't correct, make sure to write down the correct answers and then make sure to go check back your work and figure out where it went wrong. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I hope you all have a very lovely Easter break, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everybody.